In today's video, I'm going to show you how to solve two-step equations. So there are three main bullet points that I think you need to know and you might want to write down that'll help you um, sort of have a strategy for solving two-step equations. So I'm actually going to start in the middle because this comes straight from the one-step equation process. So our main objective is to isolate the variable, meaning get it by itself. And we're going to use inverse operations to isolate the variable. And if you need a reminder, inverse operations just means the opposite operation. So the inverse operation of adding is subtracting. The inverse of multiplying is dividing and so forth. Um, number two, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other. That's how we keep equations balanced. Now, if you need to go into depth with either of these two bullet points, please go watch the video on one step equations. Make sure you're really good with those. You understand everything I say there and then come back here. Okay. And then the third important point is that it's easier to get rid of addition or subtraction before multiplication or division. Now notice I said easier, but not necessary. There's always more than one way to solve an equation. I'm just offering this to you as what is usually an easier method. Okay. And you'll see why very soon. So we're going to put these three steps into action. If you need to pause the video so you can write them down for yourself and have them as a reference. So our first two step equation is going to be fairly simple. 4x minus 1 equals 11. So it's two steps because we have to get rid of two things, right? We want x by itself. Remember, our goal is always to isolate x, isolate the variable. So right now, x is on the left, head, left side sorry, of the equal sign. And the two things that we want to get rid of in order to isolate the x is that 4 and that negative 1, that minus 1, right? And then the x will be by itself like we want it. So now my first bullet point on that paper was that it's easier to get rid of addition or subtraction first. So what's happening with the X and the four? Well, if you remember from the one step equation video, because there's nothing in between here, that four is called a coefficient and these are being multiplied. So this is multiplication, right? And then here we have subtraction. So now I've already given you the hint, the tip that it's easier to get rid of addition or subtraction first. So let's get rid of that minus one. And now how do we get rid of it? That's that other bullet point by using inverse operations. So what is the inverse operation of minus one? It is plus one. So we're going to do plus one. And then that last important bullet point was whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other side. So if I'm going to do plus one here, I better also do plus one to the 11 to keep that equation balanced. Okay. To keep that statement of equality true. So now the four X is going to come down. The negative one and the positive one will cancel out, right? And just as a reminder of why, it's because negative one plus one is zero, but zero plus four X is just four X. So there's my four X. My equal sign will come down and 11 plus one is 12. And now we have just the one step equation, right? Now the only thing I have to get rid of in order to get that X by itself is the four. So now I ask myself, what is that four doing with the X? And like we just described, it's multiplying. So what is the inverse operation of multiplying? It is dividing. So we're going to divide. And remember what I told you in the one step video, we're going to use fractions to indicate division. No more of those division bars in your life. And we're dividing because four divided by four would be one and one times X is just X. And that's the achievement of my goal of isolating X, right? I've got it by itself now. And then like always, whatever we do to one side, we're doing to the other side as well. So 12 divided by four is three. And I found my solution. Once the variable is isolated, that's when I know I have my solution. X equals three. The check part. So the first step of every check is to rewrite our original equation. So I'm going to rewrite four X minus one equals 11. The second step to every check is to substitute the value that you got for the variable into the equation. So substitute, meaning just plug it in. So whatever we got for X, whatever we're saying X is equal to, let's replace X with it. So if we're saying that X is equal to three, well then let's replace X with three. Everything else is going to come down exactly as it was. I'm using parentheses because there was no sign in between here. So I'm using the parentheses to indicate multiplication so that it doesn't look like a 43, right? So I have four, my X became a three, the minus one came down, the equal sign came down, the 11 came down. And now I'm just going to follow my order of operations, right? So four times three is 12. Again, that minus one comes down, that equal sign comes down, that 11 comes down. I'm continuing to follow the order of operations. There's only one thing left to do, which is subtract 12 minus one is 11. And remember in your check, you're always looking just to make sure that you've got a true statement at the end. Because what that means is that the number that you substituted for X made this equation true. 
therefore it is the number that is equivalent to x. So x is 3 is the correct solution, okay? Let's do another example. Now we have 5x plus 7 equals negative 3. So again, two things to get rid of, right? The x is on the left-hand side of the equal sign along with the 5 and the 7. So these both have to go. But my tip to you is to get rid of addition or subtraction first. So the 7 is being added. So let's get rid of that 7. What is the inverse operation of plus 7? Minus 7. So I'm going to do minus 7. But whatever you do to one side, you got to do to the other side too. So I'm going to do minus 7 over here as well. My 5x is going to come down. 7 minus 7 cancels out because it's 0. And 0 plus 5x is just 5x. My equal sign comes down. Negative 3 minus 7. Um, if you watch the one step video, I always tell you to think about integers like money. So negative 3, you owe $3. Negative 7, you owe $7. So clearly I'm still going to owe money, right? How much money do I owe? 10 altogether. So negative 10. One step equation now. I still have to get rid of that 5. Well, what is that 5 doing with that x? There's no sign in between. Again, when there's no sign in between, that makes that 5 a coefficient and it is being multiplied by the x. What's the inverse operation of multiplying? Dividing. So we're going to divide by 5, divide by 5, right? Whatever you do to one side, we're doing it to the other side as well. Why do we divide? Because 5 divided by 5 will cancel out. Anything divided by itself is 1, and 1 times x is just x. And now that x is by itself, just like I wanted it. On the other side, negative 10 divided by 5 is negative 2. And my solution is x equals negative 2 in this problem. And the last problem, the two operations that I have here are division and subtraction, right? A fraction bar indicates division. So I have division and I have subtraction. And remember, the tip is get rid of addition or subtraction first. It'll be easier most of the time. So what's the opposite, the inverse operation of minus 7? Plus 7. So I'm going to do plus 7 here. And then I have to do it to the other side of the equal sign. So plus 7 here. Bring down that x over 3. I haven't touched it yet. Negative 7 plus 7 cancels out. Bring down your equal sign. And now let's think about money. Negative 2, you owe somebody $2. Positive 7, you have $7. So picture your $7 in front of you. You owe somebody 2, so pay them. Now once you pay them, you still have money left over. How much? You have $5 still left over, so it's a positive 5. Now the only thing I have to get rid of is this 3. What is this 3 doing with the x? Again, that fraction bar indicates division. So the opposite of division is multiplication. So I'm going to show with parentheses. So times 3 on the left and then times 3 on the right as well. These 3's will cancel out and I'm left with x equals 5 times 3 is 15. So my solution here is x equals 15. Okay. Now I do want to go back to the first problem. Now, if, you, if you're feeling a little lost, for, if you're feeling lost you have two options. You can go back to my one step equations video. Maybe you need a refresher there or you can just go over these equations again. But if you fully have gotten everything I've said, then I do want to go back to the first equation and I want to show you why it's easier to get rid of addition or subtraction first and what the second method is that you can use because I think it's always good to understand how to do a problem a second way, right? Even if it's more difficult, just to understand how it's done. So let's say in the problem 4x minus 1 equals 11, I wanted to get rid of that 4 first, right? So let's do this a second way. 4x minus 1 equals 11. Now again, if, if you feel a little overwhelmed, don't even watch this part. Skip to the end of the practice problem. But if you feel like you're with me, then um, hang on for the second method. So let's say I wanted to get rid of that 4 first, right? Well, that 4 is being multiplied with the x. So I would have to divide by 4. The thing that makes this a little more complicated is that you're not just dividing this term by 4. You're dividing every term in this equation by 4, okay? So when I do this, this will cancel out nicely, so I will be left with x, but now I've introduced something that most people don't really love working with in math, which is fractions, right? That's not to say we can't finish this equation. We can, and we will, but you will see that it's already looking more complicated than the other way that we did it, right? So now I, I have a one-step equation, and I'm subtracting one-fourth. So we do the inverse operation of minus one-fourth, which is going to be plus one-fourth. So we're going to add one-fourth to both sides. Now when we do that, our x is going to come down, 
negative one fourth plus one fourth cancels out because when you add opposites, you're always going to get zero and zero plus X is just X equals 11 fourths plus one fourth is 12 fourths and 12 fourths is just 12 divided by four, which is three. So we actually get the same solution that we got up here the first way we did it. But I think that most of you are going to agree that it was easier when we did plus one on both sides first. But I do want you to see that you can always do these things a second way, okay?